it's time for your sports faith game of the week. Man to man, here's Luke Prawl. He's going to line up a straight on three, and he splashed it. An 8 0 run. Sherwood catch, fire left wing, and he drills the triple. Then pulled it back, and now Prawl has it left wing. Reitman steps into a top of the key jumper, and nothing but nylon. The hip is good motion here. Sherwood just catch, fires, and fills it up from the right corner by Quimby. And now here's a pass intercepted. It's Haynes again. He stepped in front of Sherwood. He's going to go right at Sherwood. Oh, and Alex stopped him. Alex Sherwood, a big time block, throw ahead. Haley lead feed, layup, right hand spinner, good. Now it's time to send it over to your host and play by play announcer, Craig Bone. And good evening, everyone, from a full house tonight, Torchy Clark Gymnasium on the campus of Xavier High School. It's time for a Division III regional championship game, and it is the defending state champs in Division III, the Brilliant Lions, 21-4, the number three seed in the Chilton Sectional 2, taking on the Xavier Hawks, 23-2, the number two seed, and welcome in everyone. Craig Bone with you on Sports Faith YouTube. A rematch of a sectional final game played at Oshkosh North a year ago. As the Hawks fell in that one, 77-73, a frantic comeback late in that game. They were down by 14 with about two and a half minutes remaining. And Xavier caught fire and got to within three, but it was Jeremy Lorenz, the all-state caliber player for Brilliant last year, knocked down one of two free throws, and that's all it took as they won that one by four. Lorenz, 24 points last year in that game, and we're going to see his running mate, a senior this year, Grady Geiger, one of the better post players in the area. He's going to play his 100th game tonight for the Brilliant Lions as he had a big 21.8 rebound game last year against Xavier, and he's coming off a 20-point outing the other night against, last night I should say, against Wrightstown in that regional semifinal victory as they took care of the Tigers. 64-49 was the count. And here we go, the Hawks and the Lions come out onto a Torchy Clark floor. And what an atmosphere for high school basketball. If you haven't viewed a game here before, it doesn't get a whole lot better. I know the big field houses are nice and shiny, but this gym has been played in for 65 years as head coach Chad Schimmick and his brilliant Lion coaching staff comes out onto the floor. And what a run it's been for these Lions as of late. Back-to-back -back trips to the state tournament in Madison. They came up short two years ago as they lost to West Salem, 71-61. And go figure, they get West Salem again last year, and they won that one 61-55 as the Lions had a very narrow two-point win against Lakeside Lutheran. So they win a state championship two games and the spread was eight points. And when you're talking about these type of ball games, it comes down to every little thing. Turnover is obviously going to be key. Both these teams take care of it pretty darn well. Xavier about eight and a half turnovers a game. Brilliant about 11 and a half. Obviously, both these teams a little bit different than a year ago. No Alex Sherwood for Xavier. Carson Haley graduates as well. And obviously, Jeremy Lorenz, one of the best players in the state, he graduates and they lose three very good guards, Parker Brown, Caden Holly, and Bennett Olson. They were staples on this team a year ago, but the Lions come back with a lot of experience. Bryce Gantz gonna get a start tonight, the 5'11 senior guard. And Owen Kreplin, only a junior, but did play last year quite a bit as a sophomore. Five points, two rebounds in the game against Xavier. And then a couple of guys that obviously are going to have to be kept off the glass tonight. Cole Doracek, 
is going to get his 25th start. He has started every game a 6'4 senior, averaging about six and a half rebounds per game. And then of course we mentioned Grady Geiger. What a ball player this guy is. 20 points a game, six and a half rebounds. Obviously that is going to be key tonight defensively. It'll be him and Tyler Brightman going head to head this evening. That is going to be a whale of a matchup. So we'll see how they come out. Reed Hippis will get a start tonight as well. So I would anticipate him battling with Cole Doracek in the paint this evening. But it's going to be all hands on deck for the Xavier Hawks tonight. And if they can play defense like they have been, coming off a very impressive game last night, 73-47 as they take out the Purple Raiders of Two Rivers. You look at the defensive numbers, you think Xavier plays good defense. How about this brilliant team? They only allow 49 per game. Xavier, right in that ballpark, a little bit more, about 55 against in the season. Xavier out-rebounding their opponents 39-25. And for the Lions, with no Jeremy Lorenz this year, obviously the numbers will look a little bit different as they still out-rebound the opponent 29-21 on the season so yeah this one should be a dandy to say the least and the winner of this game will move on to a sectional semi-final and the other big matchup tonight we're going to keep an eye on it keel the number one seed taking on little shoot the number five seed as keel had to hold on last night they had a two-point lead late in that game against denmark with under three minutes remaining and they pull away late and win by 10. So the number one seeded Keel Raiders with a little bit of a struggle last night. So the winner of that one will meet the winner of this one on Thursday night in Brilliant. If Xavier advances, we'll have it for you right here on Sports Faith YouTube. Let's step aside in our North Star Dental Group pregame show. And when we come back, we'll hear from head coach Matt Clarner. We'll do that after this timeout. You're listening and watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Wait, how many times do I have to come back? Personal foul, too many appointments. You should have gone to North Star Dental. Dr. Pete and his team have experience and with today's technology can do more dentistry in just one visit. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental. And dental implants should last a lifetime. Whether you need a single tooth replacement or a full mouth reconstruction, you can get it all done here under one roof. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And it's regional championship night. Xavier Brillian, a rematch of last year's sectional final. Should be a great evening of basketball. Head coach Matt Clarner joining us. Coach, congratulations. You win. You get by two rivers. 73-47, a dominant performance. Maybe a little bit of a sluggish start, especially shooting in the lane. There was some issues there early, but you guys got going and ended up just kind of pulling away and uh, comfortably winning that ball game last night. Yeah, it feels great to be playing again today. Um, obviously, we know there's a lot of teams out there that are not playing today. And so uh, excited to have one more day with the team and have one more game and opportunity here in the regional championship game tonight. Yeah, just I, I feel like, you know, we, we did a lot of good things last night. A lot of things that we can hopefully build on and carry over into tonight in terms of our rebounding was really good. Our taking care of the ball was really good until maybe the last five minutes. You know, we got a lot of good shots, so we felt we felt good about what the boys played. Proud of them, and obviously sitting now in round three, and excited to still be here. Three of your team leaders, big games last night. Tyler Brightman, sixteen of his eighteen in the first half, seven of eleven shooting. I thought Sam Pfefferly got his offense going. You know, he's known for dishing the ball off, but last night, fourteen points in nineteen minutes, and then Hayden Quimby doing what he does. Maybe only three for nine from the field, but. Eight points in eight minutes. Those guys score 40 total points and 16 of 29 field goal shooting. Obviously, you're going to need to have that kind of performance again tonight. But I think I want to talk about the defensive end because you guys were just all over the purple jerseys last night. And uh, they score 51 on average and they get the 47. Talk about your defense tonight. Obviously, brilliant, a very good man-to-man -man team as well. But one of the keys obviously has to be defense tonight and Grady Geiger at 20 points a game going to be one of the main guys on the top of the defensive whiteboard tonight. 
one of the things we we obviously focused on was obviously the defensive end against two rivers and taking them out of their swing actions and and their ball screen actions. And I think the you know the total forty seven probably is still a little bit misleading because I think middle of the second half they were sitting right around twenty points. And so obviously you know they they scored a, a good number of points in the in the last eight or nine minutes, but. Yeah, no, we really held their number down, and I thought our ball pressure was good, help defense was good, rebounding was outstanding. So, yep, really proud of the defensive end. And, yes, that's what's going to have to carry us tonight. Brilliant is super good offensively. They've got, obviously, uh, one of the top post players in northeast Wisconsin, so you have to deal with that. And then they have experienced, you know, seniors who can handle the ball and shoot. And so just a, a dynamic team that's obviously had a ton of success this year. Yeah, we're going to have to play very well. And you guys really dug in, like you mentioned, uh, Two Rivers had 10 points right around maybe the 10-minute mark of that first half, and they close out scoring three points in the last 638, and that's really where you guys put the basketball game away. Let's talk about Geiger again, though, as far as his post game, How is it similar in a way to maybe Jeremy Lorenz last year? Obviously, he's graduated. He's moved on couple of different type of ball players. Geiger, not nearly as big, but how do you compare the two of those? And really defensive strategy wise, is it going to be a whole lot different than going against Jeremy Lorenz last year? Well, I mean, you know, I'd say Geiger is probably honestly more of a true post. You know, Lorenz was obviously uh, super skilled. He was a little bit inside, outside. Geiger really does a lot of work around the, the you know, 10 foot and in. Um, he'll catch it and sweep. He'll, he'll, he'll post up really hard. Um, they run a lot of actions to get him deep touches. That's going to be obviously a tall order for us. He's he's been the you know the big bully in their conference all year and and really last year a lot of the year too. And and obviously we're going to have to do something there to try to help him uh, or try to prevent him from becoming comfortable. Um, so yeah, obviously we have to we have to defend the lane and have to do a good job there. And then obviously again, it's not like they're a one dimensional team. They have guys in the perimeter who can score the ball. So we're going to have to really do it on the inside and the outside tonight. And I think one of the keys, too, they lose three very talented guards from a year ago. Parker Brown, obviously, Caden Holly, Bennett Olson as well. Do you think maybe some full court pressure, try to bother them a little bit? Maybe the experience in the backcourt for them isn't like it was last year. Uh, maybe talk about your full court pressure. We saw it last night against Two Rivers, and obviously it was very effective. Yeah, I think we always want to get out and pressure the ball, so that's something that we're going to continue to do. Um, you know, we'll have to pick our spots. They're – their ball handling is pretty strong. You know, it, it, you're, you're right. It may not be as experienced as last year's team, but they have seniors that handle the ball, take care of the ball. Um, Trepline's a, a junior who's been on the varsity team for three years, so like they they have a they have an experienced ball handling team. Do we want to create some tempo and pressure the ball? Absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned Trepline. He's going to be a very key factor uh, tonight for Brilliant, but this should be a very good. And fun, entertaining atmosphere. You know, you get brilliant at home. It's not a sectional ball game, so you get them in a regional championship. Maybe talk about Torchy Clark real quick. Old school gym, going to be packed in there tonight. Obviously very loud. Does home court advantage play as much into this as people like to make it out to be? I don't know. I mean, I think we have uh, had a lot of success in our gym, so I think there's definitely something to it. But, you know, we're going to have a lot of fans there tonight. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of fans there tonight. It's going to be a great basketball game. So I, I don't know if it really necessarily matters where the game is being played. Um, you got two great teams uh, who have both had great seasons, and you're battling, and, and obviously one team walks away with the regional championship. That's the, that's the fun part of, of March basketball, and we're excited for the, for the chance tonight. Yeah, well, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Get yourself a win tonight. We'll talk on Thursday then. It would be a sectional semifinal from a brilliant high school. A lot to take care of tonight. We wish you uh, good luck. Stay healthy. Get yourself a regional championship tonight, Coach. Thanks again. All right. Head Coach Matt Clowner of the Xavier Hawks joining us. And we'll come back with tip and starting lineups. It is brilliant Xavier, a regional championship from Torchy Clark Gym right here on Sports Faith. Who would you rather face? A 240-pound football player running at you full speed? or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry-free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group, and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. 
And a welcome back to our North Star Dental Group pregame show as we get set for Brilliant and Xavier, a Division III Regional Championship. And we want to thank North Star Dental Group as our pregame show sponsor. Also, Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group of the Fox Cities. And by the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley Family Fun Center. Tonight's game also brought to you by Mr. Reinebo's Cookies since June of 2014. Check them out this summer at the Appleton Farmers Markets and Card and Coin Corner Packers City Antiques. Tonight's game also brought to you by OSMS, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialist, by Let Me Be Frank Productions, by Fefferly Management and NAI Fefferly, by PRN Home Health and Therapy, by Georgia Steakhouse. Since 1939, check out their award-winning steaks. Call 920-733-4939 for reservations. And by Kingpin Pizza, by Forefront Dermatology, voted best in the Valley four years in a row. And by Gallagher's Pizza, Green Bay, De Pere, Alloway, and Swamico. And by the driveway, the Basketball Training Center. And our new postseason sponsor, the Pizza Shop on the river in Wrightstown. Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing. Best price, best service, best choice. Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing. TNT Sports Bar and Grill. Food, fun, friends. West Mason Street in Green Bay across the road from Sam's Club and Walmart. And our hometown sponsor tonight, the Xavier Booster Club supporting all Xavier High School sports teams and athletes and wishing the Hawks good luck tonight and go Hawks. And by Vertical Rays Fundraising, the most dynamic digital online fundraising program in the United States. Give them a call today, 920-265-1900 or go to verticalrays.com for more information. And by Tanner's Grill and Bar, want to welcome them into our postseason sponsorship. Kimberly location, of course, their newest location, 110 South Nicolay in Appleton. Give them a call today, 920-815-3567 to reserve your spot for all of the March Madness action. Coming up with menu specials running Thursday, March 21st through Monday, April 8th. A festive atmosphere here in the torch as the Xavier fight song being pumped out by the Xavier Pet Band. These two teams unfortunately are meeting in my opinion a little bit early. This would be another great sectional matchup, but the way it fell is the way it fell and we have a regional championship instead. Would have really looked forward to maybe Brilliant being on the other side of the bracket and maybe Xavier and Brilliant meet up again in the sectionals, but that's not how it happened. You play how the brackets line up and it's two versus three and the Hawks get the Lions on their home court tonight. And here comes Eli Mares with our sportsmanship announcement.
And our national anthem by senior Annie Strick, I believe was the name. And she did herself proud right there as we are set for starting lineups. And it'll be the visitors wearing the red with the white trim this evening. A much anticipated rematch. Xavier falls four points short last year, of course. And they would love to get them back here on their home court tonight. And it'll be number one, the senior guard, Bryce Gantz, nine and a half points per game. And he'll be joined in the backcourt by Owen Krepley in the junior at 10 points a game. And it'll be Cole Doracek, a 6'4 senior, six points, six and a half rebounds. Lucas Mathis, a 6'3 senior, he averages 11. And the big fella right here, their leading scorer, it's Grady Geiger, a four year varsity player. The 6'6 senior averaging 20 points, six and a half rebounds. He leads the Lions in both of those categories. Chad Shimmick in his 10th year, 152 wins, 98 losses. He is assisted by Tanner Benke, Andy Holly, and Brian Krizaneski. And here comes the starters for the Hawks. It'll be Sam Pfefferly coming off a 14 point, five rebounds, seven assists game last night. Hayden Quimby getting his 26th start of the year. And it'll be Reed Hippis, start number 14 for the senior. And the defensive stopper, it's Luke Crowell. Four points, four rebounds, four and a half assists. And their leading scorer for the Hawks, Tyler Brightman, 6'5", senior. 15 points, eight rebounds for the Hawks. It's Matt Klarner in his 13th year, Ross Visaki, B.J. Brown, and Jeremy Davis alongside on the bench. And strap it up. Here we go. We are ready for some big time hoops action. Division three, what a sectional this is. Loaded, Keel, Brilliant, and Xavier. Brightman against Geiger on the tap. And Geiger wins the tip and tap and it ends up in the hands of Owen Kreplin, and the Hawks gonna pick up man to man. Here's Geiger. Bryce Gantz in the backcourt, of course. Caden Holly graduates, Parker Brown, and Bennett Olson, three key guys from a year ago. And here's an air pass. Turnover number one is Bryce Gantz. Missed his target. It was Kreplin on the right baseline, or sideline, I should say. And opening turnover goes to Brilliant. They average about 11 and a half per game. And Brilliant will open up in a man-to-man. -man. And now Xavier gonna get into some man-to-man -man offense as they're trying to make sure it is a man-to-man. -man. Sam being guarded by Kreplin. Brightman actually being guarded by Cole Doracek. Here's Reed now with it. Reed Hippus snap at the crawl. Crawl wants to go on Gantz and he got to the rim and he laid it up and in. Beautiful take by Luke Crawl and the Hawks are off and running up 2 0 early. And Sam Feffley is going to get a little handsy in the backcourt. That was an easy call. First foul of the ball game. The Hawks don't lose a whole lot on this floor. Matt Klarner, seven regional championships in his 13 years, plus a state title, and two other visits to state. Actually three, counting the 2021 year at lacrosse. Lucas Mathis, another experienced senior on the floor for the Lions. Quimby going to guard Mathis, and here is a near interception by Pfefferly as he stepped in the passing lane. And this is what the Hawks have been really tuning up lately is this defense. It doesn't get much better man-to-man, -man, that is for sure. They're phenomenal. And right now, Brilliant is finding out that it's not going to be easy to get to their average of 64. Here's Geiger. 
Reed Hippis opens up on him. I wasn't sure who was going to, but that's a good choice. Hippis with some good body. He's got a little bit more thickness than Geiger, but he's not as tall. And a double team, and it's going to be a reach and fall, and it's going to be Brightman, I believe. Brightman came over with some weak side help, but he hacked down with his arm and caught Geiger across the arm, and that's team foul number two on Xavier. Anytime Geiger gets that ball near the lane, it's going to be an automatic double. Bryce Gantz being hounded out here by Luke Krull. Now Krepling, five points last year against the Hawks. Here's a little pull up by Geiger, and that's off and no good, and Brightman with a rebound. I think they'll give that shot up to Geiger if they can keep him away from the basket just a little bit. No look, feed, Brightman's got a look, and he laid it up and in. What a pass by Pfefferly and the Hawks off for nothing. A lot of energy in the building tonight, to say the least, on their home floor. As the Hawks trailed 14 late in that game last year in that sectional final, made a late push. Geiger trying to post up on Hippus, but he doesn't get it. Now a spinning move by Mathis, an errant shot. Gonna check with the rebound, turn with the right hand. He missed it. Mathis goes up and a whistle and a foul. And Hayden Quimby questioning the call, and I think the referee gave him a little stern look as Quimby picks up his first third team foul. And right now the issue early on, at least on that possession, was too many second chance opportunities as the Lions come out of there with three offensive rebounds. Lucas Mathis up and good, a 71% free throw shooter. And the Lions get on the board and almost three minutes elapsed before they do so. Xavier, you got to block off all time. Free throws included like that. Reitman snares his second rebound. He averages eight. Now Sam going to orchestrate some offense. Quimby coming off a screen. He's short and a little bit left on the three. He's been absolutely on fire lately from downtown. Very good shooter, to say the least. 38% on the year from three-point range. Here's a long three, and for the tie, no good by Bryce Gantz. And here comes Sam on the push. Tried to bounce feed at the crawl, and I think it's going to be a kicking, and I believe that's a good call. At first, I wasn't sure, but Bryce Gantz Stuck out a foot. So the Hawks with an early three-point lead. Now Sam going to toss it to Hippus, get the handoff back. Quimby being guarded very closely by Owen Kreply. Now Kroll wants to go on Gantz again in traffic. And that ball knocked away and taken away. And I think it was Kreply that got his hand in there. 4-1. Slow offensive start for both ball clubs. Geiger thought about a three. Tried to go on Reed Hippus. Reed very fortunate there with a little arm bar. They didn't call it. Now here's Mathis going to feed to Geiger. He's doubled, spin on Hippus, and he banked it up and in. He's a handful, no doubt about that. Grady Geiger, 20 points last night against Wrightstown. He gets the ball in the lane. Xavier going to put a lot of white shirts on him. Reed Hippis with a high arc. And three, and he got it. Reed Hippis only played a few minutes last year against Brilliant. But it's a whole new year, and Reed, a key component here, coming off the bench some games, but starting his 14th as the Hawks lead by four. Here's Geiger. Thought about going at Hippus. I like that matchup right now. I think Reed can body him around. And here's a pick and a steal. And a coast-to-coast -coast layup. Sam Pfefferly to the rim. And the Hawks come out 9-3 on the OSMS scoreboard. And we have a timeout. Brilliant's going to use one here early. It is a full. Let's step aside. 9-3 Hawks. Just about five minutes in, you're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Your healthcare should be about what's best for you. Yet too often, healthcare professionals focus on keeping patients within their system, including who they refer you to. I'm Dr. Will Elburo, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. 
You should be seen by who you want, and you can be. At OSMS, our focus is on providing you with the highest quality of care in a safe environment. The best part is, you usually don't need a referral for orthopedic care, putting full control in your hands. Learn more at askforosms.com. Back at Torchy Clark Gym, and the Hawks come out flying on their home court. 9-3 after the Pfefferly steal. And layup. I believe they said Brilliant called that timeout. I thought it was Xavier, but nonetheless, it was a full timeout. As four different players for the Hawks have scored. And now out of this timeout, Logan Ramchek and Olhafen check in and they come out with some full court zone pressure. We saw it last night against Two Rivers and that's what they like to do, come out of that timeout and go with some trapping defense in the back court and I think that's gonna put a lot of pressure on the Lions. Could be a big part of this ball game, Luke Kroll. Great defense on Bryce Gantz, Logan Ramchek up all over Kreplin behind the back dribble, Kreplin scoop it and score it. Wow, what a ball handling exhibition that was by Owen Kreplin as he got to the rim. And it's 9-5, Hawks. Quimby comes off a screen, popped the right wing, three, and he drilled it. Hayden Quimby, you give him an inch, he'll make you pay from downtown, and it's 12-5, Hawks. Little pin down screen that time, and Quimby got loose. Cole Doracek won't look at the rim unless he's in the paint. And a miss by Gantz and a block out by Ramchek. Now Luke Crowell in a hurry into the front court. Hawks off to a great start. Quimby in the block against Doracek. Almost stumbled and lost his footing. Luke Crowell wide right on the three and short. Doracek with the rebound. Six and a half a game for him. Lucas Mathis, and you won't see this brilliant team go very deep, and there's an unforced turnover as Grady Geiger threw it over to Kreplin, and he lost the ball out of bounds, went through his fingertips. Hippus crawled Quimby out. Pfefferly, Isaiah Disjardin's making his first appearance, and Tyler Brightman back. As Matt Klarner calling out a set, both teams, it'll be man to man pretty much this entire game. At least in the half court defense it will be. Now Brillian is gonna trap and they're gonna say he stepped on the line, Ramchek did. So a turnover Hawks. As Ramchek caught that ball and I didn't catch whether that back foot Reached the mid-court stripe, but apparently it did as Joseph Schimmick now into the ball game, a six-foot sophomore. Coach Schimmick's son. Here's a tough fadeaway, and he got it. Owen Kreplin. That was a tough one right there, and the Hawk lead down to five. Sam almost thought about going to the rim, and now they threw it away, and that ball got fumbled by Brightman, so back-to-back -back turnovers by the Hawks as Hippus comes in for Olhafen. And a little bit of sloppiness on that particular handle. I thought Sam might try to go all the way to the rim, but he tried to get it over to Brightman. Just over seven minutes now he elapsed. We expect this one to be tight throughout. Here's Kreplin, he's got a couple of back-to-back -back buckets. Behind the back dribble, he likes to go behind the back. He's done it a couple times. Schimmick, feed inside Dorchek, turn with the right shoulder, counted at one. Tyler Brightman just picked up number two, and Cole Dorchek, the big body inside, with a beautiful move on the low right block. And it'll be Quimby and Olhafen back in, and now they're going to have to sit Brightman as he's got two early falls, and Logan Ramchek will come out as well. And that's one area that no doubt is a concern for the Hawks tonight, is the damage that Brilliant could potentially do inside the painted area. Doracek rattles it in and out, a 73% free throw shooter. 
And Brilliant has scored the last four. Now Sam getting pressured out top. Reed Hippus thought about the three. Sam right down the lane, throw it up. Oh, and Heartbreak fell off. It looks like Brilliant might have settled into a zone here and they're gonna get Geiger. Grady Geiger's first. That's the first foul in the ball game on the Lions as Sam Pfefferly was able to get down the alley. And that one hung on the rim for what seemed like an eternity. Sam, a 67% free throw shooter. Free throws in this basketball game most likely will determine the game. Austin Schwartz in for Brilliant, another big body, a six foot six senior. Joseph Schimmick checks out of the ball game. 10-13 left. And Pfefferly now four early points. And the Hawks lead by five. Sam picking up full court. Good screen in the backcourt by Schwartz. Geiger out of a double team, and now it ends up in the hands of Kreppley. No, and Luke Crawl with a big time rebound. And they're gonna get Bryce Gantz with a little nickel and dime push in the back. Wasn't a whole lot, but it was enough to get called and that's team foul number two. Bryce Gantz with his first. Now brilliant man to man here on this defensive possession. Hippus, Quimby. Hayden's got an early triple. Xavier gonna be patient. Spinning, Pfefferly fumbled it, might have traveled, but he said that he juggled it. And no whistle, and what a spin move that was off of Kreplin, I believe. Or it might have been Gantz, but what a move by Sam. Looked like he might have got away with a travel, but apparently he was juggling that ball as it was tipped nearly out of his hands. There's a ball to Geiger out of a double team. And the Hawks almost come up with a steal. Here's a floating shot by Mathis. Oh, they're going to count it on a block. A late whistle. Lucas Mathis with the bucket. And I thought it was going to be a play on, but it was not. Mathis, a big time hoop. And he converts the three-point play, and it's a 16-12 Xavier lead. Quimby off a little flare action. Hayden's got it. Now he's hung up at the elbow. Sail it in the corner. Sam almost stepped out of bounds. Hippus guarded by Geiger. Crawl up top. Nice pump fake. Goes to the rim. Makes the extra pass. Quimby on the way. Short. Left iron that time for Quimby. Good passing by the Hawks there, the extra pass by Luke Kroll. And you don't see Hayden miss too many of those open jumpers. Here's Geiger, he thought about a 17 footer, but Hippus closes. Xavier by four. Austin Schwartz, only a 31% shooter. He's in there for his defense and rebounding, hung up his Gantz. Now it's Kreppley, he wants to get it to Geiger. They double hard, tries to hit a cutting Schwartz, and the ball tipped away and stolen. And here come the Hawks on the run, an excellent double team that time by Xavier. And Geiger forced the ball into the middle of the lane and it wasn't there. Hippus powered up with the right hand and good. Reed Hippus just took it hard to the rack. And the Hawks lead by six, their largest lead was seven. Here's Kreplin, he's got an early four. So far, Grady Geiger only two, and Mathis got to the rim, and he's got an early six points. Mathis, an 11 point per game score. Four point Xavier lead, Crow left wing, and he's got bottoms. Luke Crow, you saw it last night, he was getting a little more aggressive shooting the basketball, eight points, three rebounds, five assists for Crowell. He has struggled a little bit 
Field goal shooting at times, but he's got his number up to 41. Hawks by seven. You look at Crow's three-point numbers, only 27%. But it's playoff time. You can throw those numbers aside. Here's Gantz now, guarded by Crow. Bryce Gantz trying to get away from Crow. Now into the corner, it's Geiger against Hippis. And that's where you want Geiger, 20 feet from the basket. Here's an errant pass. Gantz recovers, now Mathis. And that's Xavier defense, I'll tell you what, they're digging in right now, the white jerseys are, they're all over the red jerseys. Geiger, Hippus keeps him out of that lane, that's advantage Xavier. Geiger gonna let it go, he's only made 11, but make it 12. You gotta be careful, last year he hit his first three from distance, and that's what got Brilliant off to the great start. He's 12 of 33 from distance. Sam fakes the three, drive, float, layup, he missed it. Oh, Hiffen got fouled on the floor, I believe. And we saw Xavier miss a fair share of layups last night as Austin Schwartz picks up the foul. Team foul number three, and it'll be an inbound baseline right. Hippus Pfefferly off. Brightman gonna come back with his two fouls. Ramp check in as well with 5.59 left as Sam had a good look at that drive and it just rolled off the front rim. Tried a little flare action again. They were looking for Quimby, but it wasn't there. Now backdoor feed, crawl to Quimby, and it's blocked out of there by Doracek. And they're gonna say brilliant ball. Cole Doracek came from behind and swatted that shot from Quimby away. And we got a good one brewing as we expected. 21-17 inside of 540 remaining. Kreplin driving on ram check. Logan, the freshman, going against the junior Kreplin. Let's see if they try to get it into Geiger. Geiger right now just hit a three. Gantz almost lost his footing and the ball. Xavier just like honeybees right now. They are everywhere. And that makes it hard when that defense digs in like that, it puts a lot of pressure on the offense. Mathis with a drive, almost rolled it in. Doracek had it for a moment, and the ball goes loose outside, and a hard luck foul is gonna come to Logan Ramchek as he fell into the legs of Owen Kreplin. And that's just a tough hustle fall right there on Ramchek. And Luke Kroll is gonna step off, as is Hayden Quimby, it'll be Pfefferly, and Disjardins, so the Hawks gonna go with two point guards right now, Disjardins and Pfefferly with 5.01 remaining. Just a hard luck bounce of the ball that time for the Hawks after they played some phenomenal defense. Now Isaiah Disjardins gonna dig in against Brace Gantz, Pfefferly will pick up Kreplin. Here's Geiger, he's gonna be guarded by Olhafen. Gives up his dribble, oh, and Luke reached, and he, anytime you come down, they're gonna get you, and they did right there. And it's one and one now for the Lions, and Luke Olhafen, if he just holds his ground, Geiger already gave up his dribble, and he reached down, and anytime you do, it's gonna be a foul 99% of the time, as Geiger puts up his sixth point, 71% for the senior. Playing in his 100th game, 1,165 points in his career. And just like that, Grady Geiger with seven. And the Xavier lead down to two and they have gone to a 1-3-1. It appears here against the Hawks. Lucas Mathis playing the point. Lob back to O'Hafen, lay it up and he missed a heartbreak but he put it back in. Luke Olhafen with the baseline backdoor cut. And Owen Kreplin is that back defender and he got caught on the other side of the court. And Olhafen gives the Hawks a four point lead. Dish Jardins all over Gantz. And here's Pepperly with a second steal of the ball game. Behind the back dribble, two on one, bounce feed to Brightman, he's able to recover it. And now the Xavier offense will set. 
And Brilliant now back to a man-to-man. -man. They experimented a little bit with a 1-3-1. One, one. Down to 350 remaining. Desjardins, bounce feed, Brightman, pump fake it up and in. What a look by Isaiah Desjardins. The Hawks lead by six. Largest lead's been seven. A battle for a regional championship. Geiger, he's pushed out right of the lane. Good no-look pass, fumbled by Mathis. He's able to recover. Ball deflected by Ramchek, and Mathis up and no, what a foul. Hopefully it's not on Brightman, because if it is, that's three. Oh boy, I think it is. It is indeed. Tyler Brightman, boy, that's a huge foul as Matt Klarner now has to go to the bench and it's gonna be Cole Hippis. Coach Klarner said my guy was straight up with the arms as Lucas Mathis knocks down his third free throw. Ole Heif and Brightman out and the Hippus cousins, Reed and Cole come into the ball game as Mathis looking for his eighth point, and he's got it. He's four for five from the charity stripe. And the Hawks, now it's that 1-3-1 one, one again. Let's see what they do with it, and Matt Klarner wants a timeout. He wants to absolutely talk about that 1-3-1 one, one as we have a 30-second timeout, 25-21 Xavier on the OSMS scoreboard, 3-14 remaining as you watch Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Step into a world of excitement at a Schwabadon Bowling Alley, your home for family fun in Green Bay. Since 1976, our locally owned and operated business has been Green Bay's go-to destination for fun enthusiasts. Brace yourself for a jaw-dropping experience with 60 lanes, including regular bowling and newly updated cosmic bowling. Feel the thrill as our Unreal Bowling takes excitement to the next level. Create unforgettable memories with your family at Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Back at Torchy Clark Gym, and it has been everything and even more than we anticipated so far. What a fun matchup this is. 25-21 Xavier, Hayden Quimby now back into the ball game for the Hawks. Tyler Brightman's got to sit the rest of the half. He's got three fouls, that's a big loss. Cross court skip, Disjardin around Geiger, laid up in the left hand and we got a block. Oh, and the brilliant faithful. They thought it was a charge as Joseph Schimmick was trying to hold his ground. That's only foul number four, but this one's gonna be a shooting foul for just Jardins on the quick take to the rim. He went right around Geiger. And now Isaiah to the line. He's only eight of 11. That's a good percentage, but he hasn't shot a lot. And up and calmly knocks down the first. The Hawks three for three from the line. They were seven of seven last night. And that's an area that you know they are concentrating on. Desjardins buries both. So a good start from the stripe. And we seesaw between a four point and six point lead for the Hawks. They led 12-5, was their largest lead. Now Schimmick has the ball and we have an off ball and it's gonna be Cole Hippis on a hold on Geiger and that's gonna put Geiger to the free throw line. Team fall number nine. Bryce Gantz in, Joseph Schimmick out. Cole Hippis gonna come out. Luke Kroll back in for the Hawks. 2.48 remaining. As Geiger a front end of a bonus, and that is a good looking free throw stroke to say the least. It is about as pure as you'll see out of a 6'6 kid. 71%. Keel leading little shoot, 25-24 late in the first half. The winner of that one will play the winner of this one and an offensive rebound by Cole Doracek. And it is gonna be double bonus time. Who did they get on that? It's Luke Crowell as Doracek crashed the glass. 
And Coach Klarner getting an explanation after I jinxed Grady Geiger, of course, on his free throws. So now it's Dora check for a double bonus. And the first one's long. He shoots it very well, 73% as a team. They are 72% from the free throw line, which is really impressive as a team. Geiger over the top of Crow, no fall. And now they're gonna get, what do we got? The outside official had a travel. The baseline official's gonna call a foul on Disjardins. And it looked like Geiger came into the back of Luke Kroll. They don't call it. And the Xavier fans up in arms and back to the free throw line as Cole Doracek after missing a pair. He converts on that one. And a couple of tough calls don't go the Hawks way. And now Doracek trying to make it a one possession game and he does. So Brightman on the bench with three fouls. And here's that brilliant 1-3-1 one, one, and they're gonna trap when it's on the wing. Crawl high post, gets it to Quimby. Hayden bounce feed Crow. Luke, no look, discharge three on the way. Long rebound and it comes to Mathis. That was a good look by Disjardins. And now Brilliant can tie with a triple. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in a hotly contested D3 regional title game. Geiger, he almost got picked by Disjardins and now he does. Disjardins with a poke away. Isaiah has it. Bounce feet underneath, reverse left, Quimby good. Whoa, Isaiah Disjardins with some energy on the defensive end. He almost took it away once and then he did poke it away from Geiger and it led to a two on one. 145 left first half, Hawks up five. Geiger gonna back down on Hippus. Skip it up top, Gantz, and we're gonna have a loose ball, or I should say an off ball foul, and who do they got? 23 is Lucas Mathis. An offensive moving screen, I believe. Luke Olhafen in for Isaiah Disjardins. And Austin Schwartz in for Cole Doracek with a minute 35 left. Here's that 1-3-1 one, one extended. I thought we would see more man-to-man. -man. Crawl with a drive and a floating kick to Pfefferly almost got tipped and stolen. Hayden gonna use a crawl screen. Quimby has it. Good ball handler, as is Luke Kroll. Long parking lot triple, long by Quimby. Big time rebound, Kroll. He goes up and Geiger blocks it out of bounds. That looked like a clean block by Geiger, I think, on Kroll, but it'll stay Hawks ball. Holy cow, Luke Kroll, he went up the elevator shaft on that one. Big time offensive rebound. Hip is bounce it inside. Pfefferly up and no, but he draws the foul and I like that matchup on Owen Krepley and he picks up his first. But I like Sam posting in the low block area against Krepley and he's got a little bit of an advantage. Krepley 5'11", Pfefferly 6'2". They can go to that anytime they want as Pfefferly to the line. He's got seven, he's three for three from the stripe. And now the Hawks gonna try to match their largest lead of the first half, which is seven. And was seven and will remain six. With a minute six remaining. On the OSMS scoreboard, we're inside of a minute, 30, 24 Hawks. If you haven't subscribed, by the way, YouTube, Sports Faith YouTube that is, click that subscribe button, fall away Gantz, 10 footer, that was a tough shot, and Kroll has the rebound, he's got his head up, here comes Sam down the right alley. No look, flip it to Hippus, and Reed missed a left-handed bunny. Oh boy, that's three of them tonight now. The Hawks had a little bit of a problem early last night. And I think Reed might have rushed it a hair. Luckily for the Hawks, it was knocked out of bounds by Geiger. As Dora checked back in. Austin Schwartz out, as is Bryce Gantz. Joseph Schimmick back in. Pfefferly, ball tipped by Schimmick into the backcourt. 
So Kroll can chase it down and bring it back. Reed lost track of it for a moment. I think he wanted to pull it. Now he finds a backdoor cutting all Hafen. Luke reversed it up and he overshot it. He fumbled it initially. What a pass by Reed Hippus. And now Brilliant can hold for one as Chad Schimmick calls out a set. And they will indeed hold for one as we're inside of 10. Geiger is going to set a ball screen, a great hedge on Kreplin by Hippus. Geiger with the three. No. Battle. Tipped up. No. Tipped up again. It's going to be waved off. Cole Doracek with the putback. And it was an eyelash after the horn. And we go to the half after we played some volleyball on the backboard there for a while. And oh my goodness. The Hawks come away with no points being scored against them there at the buzzer. As we go to the half, and it was high energy, high level hoops here in the torch tonight on the OSMS scoreboard. Xavier leads this one 30 to 24, back with halftime statistics and more. You're watching Hawks postseason. Regional Championship Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. and gold present let me be frank's all new comedy musical w-i-r nights where the big ones run at the minor theater april 5th through april 27th since 1964 w-i-r has been the place for stock car racing join us for thursday night thunder as favorite bobby johnny and teammate trick dickle use their patented tumble and roast move to win it's WIR Nights at the Meyer Theater, April 5th through April 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. WIR, we're the big ones. Run, run, run. Hello, I'm Red, White, and Blue Hall of Famer John Johnny. My son Bobby Johnny goes by one rule. If you're not first, you're second or third. A newcomer, Annika Hattrick, has ambushed the Dutch Mafia and gets me to get her in the Thursday Night Thunder Race. Will she win or will the tumble and roast move of Bobby Johnny and Trick Dickle foil her plans? Sarah Dickle, Trick's wife, is sick and tired of her husband Trick finishing second to Bobby. And trophy girl Lisa Verkaterin is looking to meet the right driver. It's WIR Nights at the Meyer Theater, April 5th through April 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. Wisconsin International Raceway, where the big ones run, run, run. What am I supposed to do with my hands? You're faced with a tough healthcare decision. You've been given a diagnosis and treatment options, but you're still not comfortable with the plan. It may be time to get another opinion. I'm Dr. Jason Klein, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. No matter what you're questioning, a second opinion can give you peace of mind. OSMS is doctor owned and patient focused, and we're here to help you understand your options so you can stay in charge of your health. Learn more at askforosms.com. TNT Sports Bar and Grill is Green Bay's home for delicious food, drinks, March Madness, and Milwaukee <laughs> basketball. Hey, you can't say that. Yeah, isn't it ridiculous that you can't say the name of a sporting event or a sports team in a commercial? Well, anyway, TNT Sports Bar and Grill will have all the basketball games on the big screens, plus game time prize giveaways and food and drink specials. TNT offers up a true blue buy one get one happy hour Monday through Friday, two to seven, and daily lunch and dinner specials. TNT Sports Bar and Grill, West Mason Street, Green Bay, across from Walmart and Sam's. Welcome to Main Bar at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley, where good times never end. With 30 beers on tap and a full liquor menu, your taste buds are in for a wild ride. Catch all the action on our 28 TVs and cheer on your favorite sports team. Savor our delicious food and host your events in our spacious banquet space. 
enjoy live music, and unleash your inner superstar with karaoke at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's Pizza order of 30 or more. Get Wisconsin's best pizza, dine-in, or delivery at any of our four locations. Open until 10. Elevate your program's fundraising this season with Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform for organizations of all sizes using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with you every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser for your program. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com. And we're back at the half. Torchy Clark, Jim, Craig Bowen along with you on Sports Faith YouTube as the Xavier Hawks pretty much sustained anywhere from a four to six point lead a majority of this first half, led by as many as seven. And we stand at 30 to 24 in a very entertaining rematch of last year's sectional final. That one, of course, was played at Oshkosh North. We do have a halftime score in that Keel Little Shoot game, and that is a grinder going on right now. 27-25 is the count as the Keel Raiders kind of struggled a little bit last night with Denmark, and now they're in a battle with Little Shoot out of the Northeastern Conference. So we'll keep an eye on that. The winner of that one gets the winner of this one Thursday night at Brilliant High School. But if it's Brilliant, then that site will change as Brilliant won't play on their home court. Let's take a look at first half. Leading scores first for Brilliant. And I think if you're the Xavier Hawks right now, you gotta be pretty happy as Grady Geiger and Lucas Mathis, they do have eight points each. It's been kind of a quiet eight, I would say. And Cole Doracek and Owen Kreplin with four each, and that is it. That is your 24 points as they shoot at nine of 14 from the free throw line. Overall, only seven of 18 for the Lions and only one of five from beyond the arc. So from a defensive standpoint, you gotta be pretty happy right now. The only negative of that first half is the fact that Tyler Brightman had to sit a fair number of minutes because of foul trouble. He has three. I would assume he's gonna come out and start this second half. He did finish with four points in that first half. The Hawks were led by Sam Pfefferly seven points on two of three shooting. Also had a couple of steals and two assists. And Hayden Quimby and Reed Hippus along with Luke Kroll all had five points in that first half. Hippus was two out of three from the field in 14 minutes. And Hayden Quimby, two of five, hit his first three, then missed his, or first one, I should say, and then missed his next three from beyond the arc. And Luke Kroll, a two for three shooting first half as well to go along with three rebounds. And the aforementioned Tyler Brightman, two of two from the field, three defensive rebounds. But those three big fouls and Isaiah Desjardins with some energy off the bench once again. He got himself a steal, couple of free throws and a couple of helpers as well in that first half. Luke Olhafen with a bucket on one of three shooting. And that does it, 30 for the Hawks, five of six from the charity stripe in that first half. They were 11 of 20 from the field, so the Hawks shooting it just over their season average of 50%. And three of eight from beyond the arc for the Xavier Hawks in that first half. And a big thank you goes out to our great sponsors once again, the Pizza Shop. 
on the scenic river district of Wrightstown. Stop in and enjoy hand-tossed pizzas, hoagies, salads, appetizers, and more. You have a hungry crew? Try the barge. This 18 by 26 inch pizza is sure to please. You won't regret it. The Pizza Shop, Wrightstown, 119 High Street. Your pizza is at the shop. Tonight's game brought to you by TNT Sports Bar and Grill, food, fun, and friends on West Mason Street in Green Bay. And by Jeff's Water Conditioning in Greenville Plumbing. They'll give you bottled water quality straight from the tap. No hot water, no problem. They have you covered and they'll change out that water heater the same day. Best price, best service, best choice. Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing. And by Tanner's Bar and Grill. 730 South Railroad in Kimberly, and of course their newest location, 110 South Nicolay in Appleton. Give them a call today, 920-815-3567 to reserve your favorite spot for all of the March Madness action. Menu specials will be available Thursday, March 21st through Monday, April 8th during all tournament games. And here we go. Half number two for a trip to a sectional final, or excuse me, sectional semifinal, which will be a Thursday as Brightman now triggers the inbound, so he's got to be careful, obviously, playing with three fouls. Brilliant will open with a man-to-man. -man. They did play some 1-3-1 one, one in that first half. Back door, Lob Brightman from Pfefferly. Tyler Brayman with a floating alley-oop layup. And what a look for Sam. A couple assists in the first half. Kreplin on a runner got blocked, I believe, by Brightman, but it ricochets out. And a good bounce of the ball as Bryce Gantz gets his first points of the game. And it's a three ball. Good block that time. I think Brightman might have caught a piece as Kreplin was trying to get to the rim. And now the Hawks gonna inbounds out of a tricky spot here in the very corner. It'll be Fafferly. Sam, Quimby comes off a screen, good close that time by Mathis. And now Hayden tries to go up with a floating left-hander and it was partially blocked. Might have been Dorachek getting a piece. Geiger pull up 12 footer left baseline, he left it way short. Reed Hippis was thinking about going with it, but instead he'll give it to Sam and they'll set an offense. Geiger, a good look from 12 feet, came up way short. Now Brightman looking at Mathis inside Hippis against Geiger, and the ball kicked out of bounds by Gantz. Xavier averages 22 assists per game. The ball constantly moving. Brightman on a ball screen cut. And he'll get fouled as he came off a off-ball screen by Kroll, I think it was. And Doracek picks up his first. First team in the second half. Brightman to the free throw line. Tyler, they're going to need him down the stretch of this ball game. He's got three fouls. He's got to play through that, obviously. And he's going to be long on the first. 60% free throw shooter coming in. Seven points, three boards, two assists last year in the sectional final. Obviously his minutes weren't maybe as significant as they have been this year. But he has elevated his game the last two years and he gives the Hawks a six point lead. Kreplin has it on the right handed dribble. He'll go and float off the window, no. Good pressure by Pfefferly on that. And ahead it comes Quimby. He wants to go right at Mathis, pull up, flip it with the right hand mid post. Brightman comes in, crashes, counted and won. Tyler Brightman playing with three fouls. And my greatest fear there was, was he gonna crash into somebody from Brilliant? But that was a man-child offensive stick back for Brightman. He come out of nowhere and there was a lot of red shirts in front of him. But when you're 6'5", you can do it. And Brightman, he rattles out another free throw. Back-to-back -back misses. 
And we know how big free throw shooting is. Gantz just lets fly and he hits another triple. His second three of the second half. You know Brillian, a lot of experience. They're not gonna blink tonight. They're not intimidated on the road. They've been to state the last two years. Ram check, drive it, float it, no call. He crashes to the floor. Player slow getting up. In fact, Owen Kreplin has not gotten up. And Gantz with a fadeaway 12 footer and all of a sudden, Bryce Gantz has caught fire. He's got eight. But the concern for the Lions is Owen Kreplin after Ramchek went in hard. I'm not sure if he got the wind knocked out of him or what. So Kreplin laying down here near the Xavier bench as he got maybe rolled up on, not exactly sure as they are looking at his right leg. Looks like a potential ankle as they're moving that around. So he's getting some attention from the PT, physical therapist, and Krepling gonna come up to his feet. And that would be a huge loss, potentially the 5'11 junior had four points in the first half. He's putting weight on that right foot as you can see but he will temporarily have to leave this basketball game as Bryce Gantz all of a sudden, he had 17 on five of 10 shooting last night. His season high is 20 and he averages nine and boy, what a start for him in this second half. He has eight and Joseph Schimmick, he has all eight by the way, Gantz does in this second half. So an 8-0 run by Bryce Gantz, and we got a three-point nail-biter from Torchy Clark. Brightman doubled, so he got to give it out to Hippus. Now Tyler gets it back. He's playing with those three falls. Sam going to go through the defense, and he spun it up on the window, but it was short, but he'll draw a foul. And it is going to be on Lucas Mathis, his second. And all of a sudden, team foul number three for the Lions. That's huge as the Hawks have not fouled yet in the second half. Now Pfefferly to the line buries it. And they're going to give Brightman a little breather right here. Plus protect them a little bit with those three fouls. Luke Olhafen. Hayden Quimby is, I believe, coming in for the shooter here. If Pfefferly makes this, and he does... Pfefferly with nine, Quimby in. And Sam and Tyler Brightman will be a very brief rest. I will guarantee you that. In fact, it might be offensive, defensive type of substitution, to be quite honest, as Gantz runs it up into the front court. Hawks up five. They led by six at the break. Seven points was the biggest lead. Here's Gantz. Now Crawl's going to pick him up. As Gantz, he's become a factor in this ball game. And a pick and steal. Quimby to the rim, layup good. And we've seen a couple of steals tonight. It was Sam Pfefferly earlier went coast to coast. And now Hayden Quimby matches it. And they match their biggest lead of seven. Gantz wanted to pull that trigger, but crawl right there. Now Schimmick. Gantz to Geiger. Geiger, eight points in that first half. He has not tried to overdo it tonight. He's picked his spots, and he's got a spot right now. He's doubled. Oh, and Luke's going to get called for another reaching on the arm. Luke Olafen got called for one in the first half that was similar. No damage done. First team follow the second half. Just about four minutes elapsed here. In this second half. And Al McGuire used to call games like this a white knuckler because everybody's gripping. And right now, Lucas Mathis off the inbounds, the end one. And that was a little bit too easy as Lucas Mathis just simply went to the low block. 
And Mathis now trying to make this a four point ball game and he is up and good. Mathis with 11, he's at his average. And every time Xavier tries to put on a spurt, brilliant answers. Hippis on Geiger. Extra pass Quimby to Olhafe and Luke. Drive, little Euro underneath and he missed it but the ball ricochets to Quimby. Hayden's got it. Hayden wants to drive and kick and that ball was almost stolen by Geiger. Now it's a five on four. Xavier has numbers. Hippis, three ball, right wing, got it! Hippis with a big time hit after Xavier almost turned it over twice. Reed comes up with a clutch triple. That's his second of the ball game. Hawks back up seven. Schimmick bounced it in Geiger. He's doubled. Fade away turnaround eight footer. No off the rim. Oh, the ball tipped up by Doracek. Cole Doracek with an unbelievable offensive putback on the tip in. And we are going to get a full timeout on the OSMS scoreboard. Brilliant took it. 42 37 Hawks. 13 16 remaining on Sports Faith YouTube. And we're back at Xavier High School, and it looks like Owen Kreplin getting a round of applause. He's going to come back into this ball game. Might have taped up that right ankle, but here he comes. As Brilliant just got a big time tip in Cole Doracek off of a Geiger miss. An enormous bucket because the Hawks started to get some momentum. They had that seven point lead which is their largest as Pfefferly back in for the Hawks as is Isaiah Disjardins. Sam bounce feed right at Elaine Brightman. Brightman trying to back down on Dora. Check hung up to Disjardins. He can't do anything in the land of the Giants. So he gets the refeed from Pfefferly. The three is wide open. Left wing, no. And the ball ran down by Kreplin. Brilliant. Down five. Geiger short on the right corner. Three. Throw ahead to Jardins. That one's going to be tough to catch. And it's tipped out of bounds. Fortunately, Olhafen trying to run that one down as Bryce Gantz tipped it out of bounds. Austin Schwartz back in for the Lions. Cole Doracek, he's been very solid tonight. Six points. Big body, good defender. Here's a set play out of those inbounds. Feed dangerously to a double-teamed Brightman. He turns, looked like he might have got bumped, no call. And the ball stripped out of there by Austin Schwartz. As they attacked Brightman, kind of like Xavier attacks Geiger. Either one of those guys gets the ball. They're going to garner a lot of attention. And I believe that's off the foot of Gantz. An unforced turnover on Brillian. Seven turnovers in the first half for the Lions. Four for the Hawks. And now possessions are going to be at a premium. You get the feeling. Sam kick at the dish. Jordan, he netted a triple. Boy, Isaiah Desjardins, what a senior year he is having. He is shooting at 52%, by the way, from downtown, and you can see why. Mathis out of a double team. Gantz on the way, and he drilled another. Bryce Gantz has all 11 in the second half, and he's three for three from downtown. And remember that one as the Hawks had surged ahead by eight. Bryce Gantz coming up with a ball game, 17 last night. 20 against KML earlier this year, and Brightman 
from Pfefferly again, and the combination works. Brightman with 11. Tyler's gotten loose a couple times down low. Hawks up by seven. Kreplin has re-entered after banging up that right ankle. Now Desjardins all up in the grill of Bryce Gantz. Three ball, Schwartz on the way, short. Sam Pfefferly with a big time blockout. He wants to run. Hawks up seven. Desjardins, three ball, left corner pocket hole, and it just rimmed off. Now Olhafen tie up. What a hustle play by Luke Olhafen as he tied up Gantz. Even though the arrow's brilliant, that is some great hustle by Luke Olhafen as Joseph Schimmick and Cole Doracek going to come in. And Bryce Gantz going to take a seat for the Lions, as does Austin Schwartz. And Luke Kroll back in with Reed Hippis. Hayden Quimby back on the floor for Xavier as well. Hawks, seven point lead. Here's Geiger now, Hippis out there. Staying very close to 24. Schimmick, feed it, Geiger mid post. He swarmed, still shoots it up at a double team. Missed it and Hippis ripped the rebound away. And Grady Geiger, we've seen him come up short on a couple of different shots tonight. And that Xavier double and almost a triple team that time I think had a lot of effect. Now Crowell, Xavier trying to add to that seven point lead. Quimby with some good ball faking, teardrop it in! You gotta respect the three point shot of Quimby and all it took was a little ball fake and a teardrop and the Hawks up nine. Biggest lead of the game for Xavier. And now Krepling gives up his dribble and we're looking for five and there it is! McClarner right on it. He was yelling for a five, and he no more than said that. And a closely guarded on Kreplin by Sam Pfefferly, and all of a sudden, you feel the Hawks starting to maybe separate a little bit. 49-40, but we have a lot of basketball that remains. 9.45 remaining. Here's that 1-3-1. One, one. Brilliant going to try to mix it up a little bit. Crawl got it into the front court. Xavier's a very good ball handling team. Alley oop, Lob Brightman couldn't finish. Got his own. Up against Geiger. We got a lead whistle and it's a foul. Tyler Brightman couldn't gather the alley oop, but he stuck with it. And Grady Geiger picks up his second. We've seen the backdoor lob a couple of times tonight. And now Brightman to the line, he's one of three, make it one of four, struggling. Brightman a 59, excuse me, 60% free throw shooter. Pfefferly gonna catch a quick breather. Logan Ramchek, the freshman on. Tyler Brightman up and good. He's two of five, splits a pair there. He's got a dozen. Averages 15. Biggest lead of the game, double digits. Xavier up 10. Here's Gantz, gets wide open for the three and he finally misses. After an amazing second half so far, he has 11. Now into the corner, Ramp check the freshman way short on the three and the ball, volleyballed by Brightman, but it goes to Mathis. Here comes Bryce Gantz, gonna give it to Geiger, close out on Hippis, good hedge help from Brightman. Kreplin now refeeds Geiger. Cross court, Mathis has an opening, float it, that's gonna be a charge, you betcha! That is an absolutely excellent call. Tyler Brightman stood his ground, and we're going the other way. Chad Schimmick telling Lucas Mathis shoot that basketball next time, pull up. And that's a big turnover on the Lions. Here's the 1-3-1 one, one trap. Quimby with a nice bounce feed to crawl. Now Brightman, patient, analyzing, giving the hip his pump fake on Geiger, and he snuck it in off the window. Grady Geiger, six foot six right there, but it didn't matter. Because Reed Hippis just gave the Hawks a 12-point lead, and Chad Schimmick 
needs a timeout and it's going to be a full 826 remaining on the OSMS scoreboard. Xavier 52, Brilliant 40. Back with more. You're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Step into a world of excitement at a Schwabadon Bowling Alley, your home for family fun in Green Bay. Since 1976, our locally owned and operated business has been Green Bay's go-to destination for fun enthusiasts. Brace yourself for a jaw-dropping experience with 60 lanes, including regular bowling and newly updated cosmic bowling. Feel the thrill as our Unreal Bowling takes excitement to the next level. Create unforgettable memories with your family at Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Back at Xavier High School, Craig Bone with you on Sports Faith YouTube and the Hawks have extended their biggest lead now of the game, 52 to 40. And we wanna thank once again some great sponsors. Let me be Frank Productions, George's Steakhouse, Pfefferly Management, NAI Pfefferly, PRN Home Health and Therapy, Forefront Dermatology, Gallagher's Pizza, Mr. Reinebo's Cookies, the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley Family Fun Center. Just to name a few on our broadcast tonight, and we have a dragging of a pivot foot, and you gotta credit Luke Crow right there as he made Bryce Gantz drag a pivot foot because of that defensive pressure. And now turnover starting to become an issue for the Lions. A lot of basketball left, 8-19 remaining. And the Hawks trying to move on and get their eighth regional championship in the last 13 years. Oh, and Reed Hip is very close to dragging the foot. Brightman, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Doracek. Hits a cutting rim, check, counted and a foul! Beautiful bounce feed to the cutting rim, check. And Lucas Mathis just picked up his fourth. Team foul number six. And I think Brillian got a little bit too infatuated with Tyler Brightman that time from a defensive standpoint. And Brightman gonna come out a good time to give him a breather up 14. He's playing with three falls. Ramchek long battle for the rebound and Doracek comes out of there with it. Pfefferly back in here as well for the Hawks. 54-40, all of a sudden the Hawks stretch it out. Geiger on a drive, pull up, six footer. And he has struggled a little bit this evening, but we're gonna get a hold on the offensive rebound attempt by Geiger, they're gonna get Reed Hippus with a grab. Team foul number three only though for Xavier. Next fall on Brilliant will be one and one the rest of the way for the Hawks. Geiger has yet to score in this second half. Krepling with a nice pump fake and here's Geiger on cue with the three. Geiger. He has now scored in this second half. Throw ahead to Ramchek as they break the full court pressure. And that was a much needed hit right there for Geiger. He's got 11 and the lead is 11. Reed Hippis, let it go and he got bottom. Reed Hippis, he's got the shooting stroke going his third triple. He's got a big time 13. His high this year is a 14 point outing against Seymour. And he just might go by that. Fade away, Kreplin got the shooter's roll. Kreplin with six, and now it's all out. Full court trapping pressure. Xavier, a very good ball handling team, Olhafen. Now they'll reset it with 6.45. Xavier up a dozen, Sam cut off by Geiger. Cross court skip, Ole Hafen, Hippus is feeling it, but he'll give it over to Ramchek, and bango! Logan Ramchek, and all of a sudden the Xavier Hawks are catching fire in the torch. And they're about ready to light her up in flames. 60-45, Geiger. Double, he's getting bodied. No whistle, boy, there was a lot of contact there, but they play on. Geiger just absolutely getting attacked by a couple of Hawks. 
And now ramp check off a double screen. Doesn't pull the trigger. Oh, Hafen will. Are they still feeling it? No, too deep. A little heat check for the Hawks. Geiger with a rebound. Here comes Gantz. Mathis almost wasn't paying attention. Now Geiger trying to go on Hippus. Pull up 12 footer baseline left is good. And Chad Schimmick gonna get a quick 30. And we'll keep it right here with 541 remaining in this regional championship game. I want to thank our great sponsors, of course, once again, Kingpin Pizza, Gallagher's Pizza, Green Bay, De Pere, Swamico, and Alloway, by OSMS, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialist, by our Xavier Booster Club, wishing the Hawks good luck tonight, and they support all Xavier Athletics and Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing. Best price, best service, best choice. The Pizza Shop on the River in Wrightstown and TNT's Sports Bar and Grill, Food, Fun, and Friends, West Mason Street in Green Bay. Now the Hawks gonna have to take care of the basketball. Quimby's gonna get trapped, he retreated. Now a bounce feed the Crow. They got numbers if they want it. Throw ahead, Brightman, he's gonna step into a triple. Oh, and he rimmed off, Pfefferly has it. Go back up, left-handed, put back good. Xavier playing pretty free right now. I thought Tyler Brightman might pull that one down and take some clock. Pedal to the metal. 62-47. Bryce Gantz got bumped, and I think that's going to be a shooting fall. It will be, as they got Luke Kroll on the hip check, his second. Make it his third. Team foul number four, and Bryce Gantz to the line for a pair. He has 11, all of them in the second half. This was a six point game if you're just joining us. Xavier had to lead at the break. And a little bit of a spurt here recently as Olhafen gonna come off. Reed Hippus, who's had a whale of a basketball game, 13. So Hippus and Geiger, 13 apiece in this ball game. As Gantz looking for his 13th. So Gantz and Geiger with 13. And here's Brightman standing alone at the midcourt stripe. They easily break the pressure. Back to Brightman, to the rim, reverse spinner good! Tyler Brightman, he got around Geiger and he spun it off the window. He's got 14, that was a pretty reverse spinner. 15 point lead, Hawks. Crep lane three is wide left and long. And right now the Hawks starting to seize control of this basketball game. Down inside a 440 remaining. Kreplin now extending his defense on Pfefferly. Hippus looking. No need to get careless or take a crazy shot here. Use a little clock. Pfefferly spins out of a double team. Help from Gantz. And Xavier, they are very difficult to defend when they're up by 15 on their home floor. You have the maestro right here, Sam Pfefferly. It's like a yo-yo in his hand. Gives up the dribble, the crow. Got Brightman one-on-one -on -one with Geiger. Pump fake left-hander and he overshot it. Oh, Tyler wanted that one. Here's Gantz now between the legs trying to go on crow. Geiger, pull up 15, footer straight on and he made it. He's got 15. Time's starting to become a factor now, though. We're inside of 340. Xavier gonna have to make some free throws to close this out. Quimby trying to avoid a five second, closely guarded call. Now Crawl, Luke down the lane. Brightman thought about going to the hoop. That's a good decision not to. Door check all over Brightman and a good timeout by Luke Crawl. There's some senior leadership right there. You normally see it come from the bench, but Luke Kroll recognized the situation that Tyler Brightman was in, and he got the Hawks a much needed timeout. With 3.18 remaining, 
Hawks trying to go to 24 and two. And we want to thank Carden Coin Corner for sponsoring tonight. Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group of the Fox Cities. And our good friend Frank Hermans. Let me be Frank Productions, by the way. Frank Hermans, a resident of Brillian, and I believe he's here tonight, or at least he said he was going to be. If not, and you're watching, Frank, I know you're cheering for Brillian. Your lovely wife, Amy Reamer, very talented singer on your staff. She is from Brillian. So that's where they reside. So he's cheering for the red, but we won't hold that against you. Brightman with a big right-footed step. What a stride that was. I thought he was going to shoot it. Sam slaloming through the defense. There isn't many teams that can handle the rock like these guys. It's Pfeffley. He just got fouled. They didn't call it. Quimby now. He's going to dance and prance. And between him and Kroll and Pfefferly. Oh, Sam starting to get grabbed a little bit by the arm. And now they finally got one on Doracek as he hip-checked Hippus to the floor. And with 2.39 remaining, it's going to take a lot for the Lions to continue their season and try to get back to Madison for the third consecutive year. As Hippus, good with the front end. What a game for Reed. He's got 14. This will be his season and career high if he can get it to go, and he does. 15, and I didn't want to jinx him, and thankfully I didn't. He's got 15. The lead is 15. The Hawks are starting to sense it. Mathis pull up, and he got hit on the elbow by Hayden Quimby. Quimby's second. It'll be a shooting foul, and it'll be Lucas Mathis to the free throw line where he has 11 points. What a performance by the Hawks. This was nip and tuck most of that first half. And then Bryce Gantz caught fire for Brilliant and he kept answering the bell. But at the end of the day, the depth and the senior leadership of the Xavier Hawk team has been the difference as Lucas Mathis splits a pair. Joseph Schimmick into the ball game and Mathis will leave. 2.31 to go. Brilliant full court pressure. Hippus relieves it. An immediate foul in the backcourt. And it's going to be on Cole Doracek. He now has four. Team foul number eight. Austin Schwartz and Lucas Mathis back in. And Reed Hippus. Back to the free throw line for a one and one. And DePier beats Fond du Lac tonight. 70-54, the number one Redbirds advance to a sectional as the front end missed by Reed. Down to 220. We'll try to get some other scores. I know Keel had a nine point or an 11 point lead in the second half. Tough fall away left of the lane by Geiger. He runs, runs down his own miss and then he gets fouled. And Grady Geiger having one of those nights where he might have 15, but I'll tell you what, he's had to earn them. Shimmick back in for Mathis as that was on the floor, fall number six on the Hawks. Schimmick gonna step into a 3-0 and you don't foul there and count it. Schwartz refed the inbounder, Joseph Schimmick and Hayden Quimby got him across the arm and it's an and one, a four point potential for Joseph Schimmick with 2.05 remaining. You don't want to do that, and now it's a 10-point lead for the Hawks. 
Xavier gonna have to make some foul shots. Quimby splits a double team. Almost had it knocked away. Now Brightman steps through and he got bumped by Geiger. Tyler did a nice job that time veering to his left and avoiding a potential foul. Actually, they got Bryce Gantz, his second. But nonetheless, Brightman was going towards Geiger. And now Brightman for a big one and one. He's two of five on the evening. Lucas Mathis back in for Coach Schimmick and Brillian. Big one and one right here. Got to put this game away from the line. High Arker, he rattles it home. We talk about free throw shooting all the time. 62% as a team. And I know the Hawks would like to get it up there a little higher than that. Brightman with the second one. And that's going to be long. And the Hawks lead by 11 with a minute 50. Driving is Shimmick around Brightman, and he blocked it, and I think Shimmick might have lost it on the way up. But Brightman swatted it off the bottom of the backboard, and Geiger is going to pick up his third. And the parade to the free throw line continues, and it'll be Reed Hippus with a double bonus. 15 for Reed Hippus this evening. 15 for Brightman, now make it 16 for Reed. And he is leading the Hawks in scoring. Hippus, this will be a career high and it is ready as he comes up short on the second. Xavier by 12, now you just don't follow anybody. Gantz parking, lot well, three and he got nothing but net. His fourth triple, he's got 16 in the game. And Brilliant gonna get a quick 30. And it's the heart of a champion. The Brilliant Lions will not go away. 68-59 with a buck 37 remaining. And now it's a matter of Coach Klarner drawing up. Some offense against this full court pressure which Xavier has really done a nice job. They've seen a little bit of everything from Brilliant tonight. They've seen full court pressure. They've seen 1-3-1. One, one, and they've handled it very, very well in this game. We'll take a look at the statistics when it's over. But turnover-wise, I don't think they're any higher than their average of eight. That's how good it's been. And now Luke Kral going to trigger into Quimby. He's going to get trapped. Nice little ball fake to Pfefferly. Sam in trouble, it appeared. But Schwartz is going to bump him as he was going through three red shirts. Austin Schwartz, his second. And a double bonus as the Hawks can salt this away with a minute 32. This is where free throws are absolutely huge. And he will get another. And suddenly, a little bit of anxiousness in the building. Nothing is a given. Even with a nine, now 10 point lead, 69-59. Hawks trying to hold on. Krepling races it in the front court. Gans, he's looking to just trigger it from anywhere. Got crawl off his feet. Step back three, no, and Brightman with a big rebound. He'll hold and get fouled. As Joseph Schimmick gets called. And Brightman, double bonus here, and he nets both. And the Hawks lead by 12. Gantz with a tough fall, and they're going to get Brightman with a little bit of a too harsh of a block out, if you will. The push on Brightman is fourth. 
But this one is looking a lot better here suddenly as the Hawks have been in control for most of the second half, but Brillian did cut the lead to nine. And now Shimmick to the free throw line. He has five points as Cole Doracek will come in. Lucas Mathis will take a seat. 109 to go. The Hawks trying to get another regional championship as Shimmick wide right on that one and Quimby has it. And now Brillian going to come and try to trap Quimby and that ball's saying, they're saying it's off of Quimby as a good reach in by Kreplin I believe and that ball goes off of Quimby and out of bounds. And this brilliant team, they're laying it all out on the floor, down 11 with a minute. There is absolutely no quit in the defending champs, Division Three. Now Gantz has to go fast. Gantz all the way to the rim, reverse, left-handed layup, he missed it. Tough heartbreak, and now he'll foul Brightman as Bryce Gantz has had himself a tremendous ball game in the second half especially. He's got 16 points. And he leads the Lions in scoring, but he wasn't able to get that tough left-handed reverse to go. And now Brightman back to the line once again, rolls it in. I have Brightman with 11 free throw attempts. He's made seven. And make it eight. He's got 20, Brightman does. Season high is 30. A drive by Gantz, he floats in the corner. Shimmick rises and fills it up. His second triple, he's got eight. And the Xavier lead 10, Quimby now. That was a fall, yeah, I was wondering when the whistle was gonna blow. As Brace Gantz with a pretty easy reach in on Quimby. Actually, Xavier would have probably been fine with that not being called. Take a little more clock. But this one pretty much is in the bag. 28 seconds remaining. And now it's just a matter of what the final score is going to be as Quimby rattles out the first. He has nine tonight. Hawks trying to get to their average of 76. And it's 74 now. Quimby with 10. Kreplin. Mathis lets fly, three no good, Crow with a rebound and they're gonna get a foul and you don't wanna see an injury take place as Crow went up hard for that rebound and he got bodied and it looks like Crow is okay as Bryce Gantz got another one and that is gonna be number five for him if I have it right and that's gonna do it as Brillian gonna call up the dogs and wave that white flag as that'll do it. Grady Geiger and a great group of seniors. Cole Doracek, Lucas Mathis, along with Grady Geiger and Austin Schwartz. As the Hawks Celebration has begun. A lot of hugs and a lot of standing ovations for this group of Hawks. Joe Gallucci gonna finish things up. Cole Hippus, Ramchek out here as well. Luke Olhafen as the Hawks win their eighth regional championship in 13 years under Matt Kleiner. And Kroll knocks down two. He's going to get a standing ovation. Seven points for the defensive stopper on the Xavier team. The, the tempo setter on the defensive end. Isaiah Desjardins will come in for him. And it's hugs galore. As Grant Leiterman, another senior, will finish up for Brilliant as he throws that one out of bounds. Looking for Logan Schmidt. But the Hawks will dribble out 9.1 and they move to Thursday evening. 
And we'll see if it's Keel. They had a nine point lead. We'll get you a final on that. And speaking of finals, we got one right here on the OSMS scoreboard. Xavier 76, Brilliant 63, a Division Three Regional Championship. We'll come back to wrap things up and get our final statistics and get you set for Thursday night. Your final again, as you see it right there in the lower left, 76-63, Xavier wins it. Back with more, you're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. and gold present let me be frank's all new comedy musical wir nights where the big ones run at the minor theater april 5th through april 27th since 1964 wir has been the place for stock car racing join us for thursday night thunder as favorite bobby johnny and teammate trip dickel use their patented tumble and roast move to win it's WIR Nights at the Meyer Theater, April 5th through April 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. WIR, where the big ones run, run, run. Hello, I'm Red, White, and Blue Hall of Famer John Johnny. My son Bobby Johnny goes by one rule. If you're not first, you're second or third. A newcomer, Annika Hattrick, has ambushed the Dutch Mafia and gets me to get her in the Thursday Night Thunder race. Will she win, or will the tumble and roast move of Bobby Johnny and Trick Dickel foil her plans? Sarah Dickel, Trick's wife, is sick and tired of her husband, Trick, finishing second to Bobby. And trophy girl Lisa Verkaterin is looking to meet the right driver. It's WIR Nights at the Meyer Theater, April 5th through April 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTheater.org or call Ticketstar at 920-494-3401. Wisconsin International Raceway, where the big ones run, run, run. What am I supposed to do with my hands? And we're back and you see the Xavier Hawks in celebration mode as they move to a sectional regional or sectional semi, I should say. And we just heard Keel was a winner tonight, but because of the Xavier girls playing at State on Thursday, they have moved that game to a Wednesday night, and that one will take place at Brilliant High School. So that is the latest we get as Keel moves past Little Shoot this evening. And I'm going to assume that is a 7 p.m. start and we'll have it for you on Sports Faith YouTube as the Hawks get it done tonight, 76-63 as they just slowly pull the way in this basketball game. The defense key once again. Grady Geiger, the leading scorer for Brilliant, does come away with 15. But they were hard earned. They were led in scoring the Lions were by Bryce Gantz. He came into this ball game only averaging nine. He scored all 16 in the second half. He tried to keep the Lions around the best he could. Lucas Mathis finished with 12. Eight from Joseph Schimmick. And six each from Owen Kreplin and Cole Doracek as they finish with 63 points. Averaging right around that 64 and a half. And for the Xavier Hawks, the regional champion Hawks, they were led by, as I'm doing some quick math on the fly, 22, I believe. 22 for Brightman, I believe. 14, 16, 18, make it 20. Unofficially, we'll call it 20. For Brightman, two for Lok Olhafen, as I'm adding them up. Five for Logan Ramchek. A big 16, though, career high for Reed Hippus tonight. 12 from Sam Pfefferly. 10 from Hayden Quimby. Seven from Luke Kroll. And five each from Isaiah Disjardins. And as I mentioned, Logan Ramchek and a lone bucket for Luke Olhafen. 
in that first half. As we'll get you some more specific final statistics here as far as shooting. As I want to thank Derek Gentry, father of Jonah Gentry, and our camera guy tonight, Jude Gentry. I want to thank Derek for getting me over some very solid statistics. Brightman, 20 points. Six of nine shooting for Tyler, 7-11 from the stripe. 10 rebounds, so a double-double for Tyler Brightman tonight. And Reed Hippis got that big 16-point number. He played outstanding, five of six from the field. He was three for three from distance. Three rebounds as well. And you throw in an assist for Reed Hippis. Sam Pfefferly with the dozen. Very solid, three of four, six of eight from the free throw line. And he had five helpers. He averages about 6.2 assists per game. Hayden Quimby with a double digit performance. Four of nine from the field, he scores 10 to go along with four rebounds and one assist. And Luke Kroll, seven points, six rebounds, a couple of assists. He does what he does. And a lot of it is on the defensive end for Luke Kroll and Logan Ramchek with five on two of four shooting. Isaiah Disjardins, another solid night off the bench with five, a couple of steals, throw in a rebound. Good all around game for him. Obviously some limited minutes as that starting five takes up a pretty good chunk, especially in the postseason. but the Hawks advance it's all about winning surviving and advancing and that's what they will do and they will get the number one seeded keel raiders who are undefeated on the year 26 and 0 as brilliant their two previous losses came to keel this year so the lions now finish this campaign, and it won't be at Madison for the first time in two years, 21 and five, the Lions will finish their campaign. And Chad Shimmick and his group, season comes to an end, but it's been a great run for these Lions. Back-to-back -back state appearances, and of course the championship last year, but not quite enough to get back to that point this year as Xavier Kind of gets, I guess, the payback win tonight as the Hawks season came to an end last year against this same Brilliant Lions team. And you take a look at the Hawks from the field tonight. Pretty solid performance, over 50%. 24 of 44. 7 of 17 from beyond the arc. 21 of 31, though, from the free throw line. Not as good as you'd like. So they leave 10 points out there. And the rebounding numbers, even Steven, 26 apiece in this ball game. Turnovers, brilliant with 13. Xavier really handled it well. They only turned the ball over six times in the game tonight. And they were faced with a lot of different challenges, but Sam Pfefferly, Luke Kroll, Hayden Quimby, those guys were absolutely Unbelievable tonight under pressure. And that is a big part of the reason why the Hawks are moving on to a sectional semifinal. It's a Wednesday night tip. It's moved to Wednesday. The Xavier girls are playing at the Rush Center on Thursday. So they don't want to conflict with that. So it'll be a big one. Keel and Xavier from Brilliant High School on Wednesday evening. Should be a fun, fun evening of high school basketball. Let's step aside and take another timeout in our post-game show as the fans have gathered onto the floor and the celebration has begun. The Xavier Hawks get it done tonight. 24 and two now on this campaign and it'll be a heavyweight showdown Keel Xavier Wednesday night, and we'll have it for you on Sports Faith YouTube. 
Let's send it to a break. We'll come back after this. 76-63, Xavier. Back with more. You're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Who would you rather face? A 240-pound football player running at you full speed or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry-free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group, and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's Pizza order of 30 or more. Get Wisconsin's best pizza, dine-in, or delivery at any of our four locations, open until 10. Welcome to Main Bar at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley, where good times never end. With 30 beers on tap and a full liquor menu, your taste buds are in for a wild ride. Catch all the action on our 28 TVs and cheer on your favorite sports team. Savor our delicious food and host your events in our spacious banquet space. Enjoy live music and unleash your inner superstar with karaoke at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Elevate your program's fundraising this season with Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform for organizations of all sizes using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with you every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser for your program. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com. And we're back at Torchy Clark Gym. Craig Bone with you once again in the Hawks. 76-63 winners. And we'll move the camera right there. And the Hawks. Time for some picture taken. As they win their eighth regional championship in Matt Klarner's 13 years here at Xavier. And we'll try to get maybe a Hawk up here for an interview. We'll see if we can pull that off. And it looks like it's gonna be Reed Hippus joining us here up in our perch, just behind the Xavier bench. And let's get us on camera, and what a performance tonight by the aforementioned Reed Hippus joining us right there. And let's get some audio turned up. And it is indeed one of the seniors, one of the seven seniors, Reed Hippus here joining us on our post-game show. And congratulations Thank on you. another regional Thank championship. Uh, a lot of excitement in the building tonight. This was a backyard brawl for a while. 76-63 might be a little bit deceiving. Uh, this brilliant team, you know, they won a championship last year and they weren't gonna go down easy. Talk about that first half because it was kind of a grind out. You guys had a six point lead. But it was back and forth a little bit. You guys kind of sustained a four-point, six-point lead. Let's talk about the intensity on the floor tonight uh, with what was at stake. Yeah, it was, it was really high tonight. I mean, really a great team, uh, defending state champs, like you said. But the intensity in the locker room was everyone was dialed in, locked in, ready for this. And once we got on the court, we knew it was go time, and we all just were ready to, to play this game. And we knew we, ha we, knew we could have done it, and... That's what happened today. So our energy, once we hit that first, um, who made the first shot? Um, Luke Craw on that layup right away. It was, yes. we knew it was ours. So we just played hard the whole time and that's what that's what it takes really. You know, I talked to you earlier this year after the West De Pere game, um, how much your game has improved, especially from a shooting standpoint. That three point shot looked pretty, pretty precious tonight. I'll tell you what, a career high 16. I was gonna ask you what has made it that way obviously practice 
but just the confidence level just seems to be just at a different level for you. Yeah, so a couple years ago when I was uh, scout team really for the varsity team, I was shooting Dr. Dish about 500 shots every Sunday. And when I was in here with the, with the older guys and I started knocking out shots, that's just what really boosted my confidence to step in and game and do it. And these past couple games have been pretty cold, so it felt nice to see him go through the room tonight. Yeah, I think I had you with three triples tonight. Let's talk defense because you guys take a lot of pride in the fact that you can shut teams down. And I thought you gave Brilliant a lot of fits tonight defensively. You double teamed Geiger quite often every time he touched the ball pretty much. But you made him work. I thought that was one of the keys. Grady Geiger ends up with 15. It was a very quiet 15. Talk about the strategy. Was it pretty much double team 24 when he got the ball? Um, basically, yes. Um, if he was inside the paint or a little bit outside that, we would double team hard, shoulder to shoulder, coach was, was saying. But um, Grady or Geiger is a really good player, and he's been averaging a lot this year, and he's hurt a lot of teams. So our mentality was to come out early and double team him right away so he couldn't get going. But, you know, those those fouls early and got him into bonus, and he hit those free throws. He's a great free throw shooter, but um, the mentality was to double team right away to shut him out of the game and make other players hurt us. Yeah, and I think it caused him a few issues. I know he came up short on probably maybe three, four different shots where he had pretty good looks, especially on the left baseline a couple times, came up short. So I think just overall your intensity throughout the whole game I think had a lot of effect not only on Geiger, but the other guys as well. Bryce Gantz really stepped up, though. Yeah, for sure. Scored all 16 in the second half. But at the end of the day, I think your depth, your defensive pressure, that is what wins you basketball games. Any thoughts? I know you're celebrating here right now. Keel got it done. They beat Little Shoot. So now a Wednesday night. So even less time to prepare. Yep. So Wednesday night at Brilliant. What are your thoughts? Keel, 26-0, the number one seed coming in. Uh, yeah, they're a great team. I, I don't really know too much about them. I know they have a great point guard who can score and pass really well, but our mentality is going to be the same as we came into this game, knowing we can win, believing in ourselves, believing in each other, and just being able to take away their best player and make other players hurt us like we did tonight. So that's going to be our key for Wednesday. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it's been a fun, enjoyable ride so far, but we got a long ways to go. Yes, we hopefully have a couple more sectional games, a couple more W's, and then maybe we make a trip to the Kohl Center. Let's do it. How cool would that be? Amazing. All right. Thank you very much, Reed Hippus. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. joining us on the post-game show right there. Reed Hippus, a big night tonight, a career-high 16 with some phenomenal shooting from the perimeter. He knocked down three three-point buckets. Got a couple of finals right here. Keel did end up winning that game against a little shoot by... 67-57, and FVL, Fox Valley Lutheran, they get by Mosini tonight, 76-61. to So some local teams doing very well. I know Kokona was playing Appleton East tonight. Another good matchup, an FVA matchup, a third matchup of the season. I did not see a final score on that. But... It doesn't matter for the Division Three Xavier Hawks because they win yet another regional championship. That's going to do it from here. 76-63 was your final score on the OSMS scoreboard. We'll be back next Wednesday night at Brilliant High School. Xavier Keel in a sectional semifinal. Should be a fun one. And that'll do it from here. You've been watching exclusive coverage of Xavier Hawk basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Good night, everybody.